Hey everybody, this is your career advisor, Drew Barso, coming with you today for a presentation on the sales function brought to you by the Fulton Career Cast that we go into this summer. And I wanted to highlight just a different career path that we can that we see students take and that different career path that's out there, and that's the sales function. So I when I was reading, I specifically came across a book called Entering Startup Land. An Essential Guide to Finding the Right Job by Jeffrey Buskang. And in this book, he highlighted the sales function very well. And I thought, by no means is this all inclusive, but the following framework could be applied to sales roles in industries from tech to financial services and everything in between to kind of get a better understanding of what the roles look like and what you can get into and how you can perform well in those roles. So Without further ado, I'll start the presentation. And just before we get started, you can see in the top right corner, entering startup land, if you're interested in the book, you can find it online. Let me know and I can give you some resources for it. So first of all, why sales? Why would I be interested in getting into sales? And when you think about it, I outlined here, you get to generate revenue, it's customer centric and multiple personality types of work in the role. But high level, when you think about it, in any tech organization or any organization in general, at some point you need to generate revenue by selling. You need to take that idea and monetize it. The sales process can be telephone based, it can be email based, or it can even be content marketing based. But by some means, you have to have a sales process. The core function of any company is to earn profit by solving that customer's problem and providing valuable solutions. And on a day-to-day -day basis, this is what you're doing as a salesperson, salesman, saleswoman. So when you think about it, salespeople are the first line to gather information from the market. They talk to customers, they listen to their needs, they, talk, they understand what the problems are that they're trying to solve. They watch the customer's environment, they keep track of competition, and they stay on top of industry trends. Sales is a great entry point to any organization, large or small. If you have grit, determination to succeed, you might find sales to be a good role to get into, especially early in your career. You're close to revenue and you're close to that customer. So in essential, you are accountable to a number. So from an early perspective, it's very clear cut how you're performing against the metric or your goal for the quarter. If you wanna rise in corporate ranks, having this closeness and accountability helps over the longer term. The last thing I'd like to touch on is the multiple personality types. And I, I was reading a review from the Harvard Business Review and they ran a test that interviewed thousands of successful sales professionals. And really the four top personality traits that I took out of that review were being modest, conscientious, achievement oriented and curious. And we'll get into a lot of those traits later on in the roles that we look at. So now specifically in a sales organization, I like to think of the structure as there's really eight types of roles that can be available. This is more for a tech company, but it can be applied to certain industries as well, other industries. So I had, as you see here, the eight are outside sales, inside sales, sales engineering, sales ops, account management, client services, professional services, and installation and training. In further slides, I will kind of outline deeper what they mean, what each one looks like. So specifically, I want to start with the outside sales role, what they do, personality traits, compensation, pros and cons. So when you think about outside sales, the first thing you think about is they're the key conduit to connecting and with customers and closing and securing deals. They generate revenue for the firm through sourcing and closing those deals. They're frontline with the customers. They're pushing, they're selling, they're advocating for the product, understanding what the needs are. And for outside sales, you're with the customer. So outside of COVID times, you're traveling heavily. You're covering territories or regions to have impact. When you think of personality for an outside salesman, Think of it as the BPOC or the big person on campus. It's essentially the personality where you, you like, you're gregarious, you're, you're outgoing, you're able to 
listen well, but you're also able to be authoritative and get your point across. So other personality traits for a good outside salesman that I found were a strong listener. You avoid distractions so you can hyper-focus in on what you're doing. You're able to be a solution seller, so you're listening to problems and coming up with specific solutions. You're strategic, you're a strategic thinker, so you're hearing the customer's concerns and crafting your product in a way that solves those concerns. And then at the heart of it, you're a problem solver. Compensation for outside sales roles can be very lucrative. You can earn a base salary and then you can have both on target earnings. So if you're doing well against a quota or some target and you have potential for bonus, both if your department reaches their goals, et cetera. In the outside sales position, pros of this job can be the high impact that you have as a contributor. Like we mentioned, you're directly tied to revenue. So your performance can be measured. And the better you do, the better your, your impact is on direct revenue. And that can lead to a lot of professional success. You have high potential for salary. Like we mentioned, you have both your chance to earn both a base and then a bonus depending on how you perform in the quarter. And depending on personality traits, if you like to travel, you have a high potential to cover a territory and travel across regions. Some cons for the job is do or die. Your job can be on the line every quarter, every year. So you don't want to have too many bad back-to-back -back quarters because this can add up and you could be out of the job. There's also high intensity in the job from just the demands of it, but some people are turned on by this this energy and, and they're able to do it. And then I also put travel as a con, depending on who you are. If you like to be planted in one place and you want to have more control over your daily schedule, moving around a lot in the sales profession may not be what you're looking for. So I'd like to include one video in this just to kind of make my point. When you think of an outside salesperson, Think of that person having the personality of wanting to take the last shot in the game. So I put a little clip in here of Jalen Suggs sitting the buzzer beater against UCLA to kind of just portray that if you want to be a successful outside salesperson, you got to kind of have, have want to have that personality of I want to take that last shot. I want it to be on me. This dynamic is actually why a lot of former athletes can be frequently drawn to sales roles because there's the scoreboard and it's very clear at the end of the day who's winning. The job is about hitting your stats, knowing your numbers, working as a team, and quite frankly, winning. Next, we have the inside sales position. Sometimes it can also be known as business development representative or sales development representative. High level, this is a great entry level role into any corporation. What you do is you work at the desk or, and your, your job is to outreach to potential clients either through phone or email. This, how you get in contact with your customers may be either outbound oriented or inbound oriented. Also, in some inside sales positions, it might solely be your job to get in contact with the customer and book meetings for the outside field sales reps to come in and, and converse and close that deal. So I mentioned outbound and inbound oriented sales, and I'll just you can defer the difference of the two. When you're when you get outbound sales lead, you make outbound calls and send in emails to potential prospects. Versus inbound oriented sales is when a customer inquires or expresses interest in your product. Uh, generally, this comes through marketing efforts. So think of it as when you're on a website and you chat bot features. So say you're on an e-commerce website and you're on the page for a little bit and a chat box pops up. How can we help you today? What are you looking for? And this is where you can respond and that's, that could be more of an inbound lead. Career advancement for this inbound sales role, in, in, inside sales role, is, is as you progress, you can look to in, in, in go to inside sales manager positions, VP of sales roles, chief revenue officers, chief executive officers at some point, or even market and product roles where you have such a great understanding of the product, the industry, the outlook that you, know, you can shift over into other areas of the business. 
Similar to outside sales, you can have potential for high salary earnings, depending on how you perform. You have both a base salary and an on-target earning potential, on-target bonus earning potential. The next role I want to talk about is both account management and client services. And through research, my understanding and what, I, what I've seen talking to friends is these roles really merge between the two. So in a tech sense, in a software as a service business model, account managers have really grown in importance for these type of companies. Specifically, once a business acquires a customer, the, the sales rep is now moving on to the next customer, looking to expand the horizon, you know, venture out to new detail, venture out to new horizons for the company. The account management and the client services rep's job is to keep that acquired customer happy. If the acquired customer in a SaaS business model, it can be very expensive to find new customers. So when you gain a customer, you want them to be in your system for as long as possible, multiple years. And this is where these roles fit in to make, make sure that customer is happy, either through supporting, managing information, implementation, troubleshooting, or securing that renewal service. Main job specifically is to keep the customer happy. So I, I include the, the hunter the hunter gatherer or hunter gatherer picture to kind of think of it as salespeople get paid to hunt. They bring in the big game and then they're back out on in the field searching for the next kill, essentially. As the gatherer or the account management or client service position, you handle the skinning, the cooking, the preparation of the food. You might also gather fruits, nuts, and berries to kind of complete the mail. So Account manager's focus is on taking advantage of the success of salespeople who have secured the initial contract, and you want to make sure that account stays successful over time. In this role, you need to be a strong problem solver and have a willingness to help people. You're still very much customer focused, so you get that customer centric orientation, you're meeting with clients. Your travel is not as in, intense as maybe an outside sales rep, but you are still meeting with clients, going to them. And it can be a lot more steadier in terms of quarterly, quarterly outcome in the job. So the next role I want to specifically talk about, and this role is specific to a tech company but that, that is a sales engineer. And sales engineers are the wing person for the salesperson. And they sit between engineering and sales. And they provide technical experience and interface with customers who may be more technical in a firm. And when they're talking to them, they ask more specific questions that the general outside salesperson maybe can't provide an answer to. So think of it as, a sales rep has a few meetings with a company. That company brings in their IT director or their chief architect or a CTO, and they're asking the technical questions. How does this? How does that? How does this merge with our system? How does this merge with our our platform, etc.? And this is where the sales engineer comes in to really provide the toe-to-toe -to -toe technical technicalities of the product with the customer. Sales engineers understand the entire suite of products and how they fit into the customer's environment. Being an expert in how customers use their product and how they might integrate the product of a suite of products in their environment is a crucial part of the sales engineer's role. When you think of personality fits in this type, in this type of work, think of technically minded so they have a degree in maybe computer science or physics or engineering. They enjoy coding, but they may not want to be a full-time software developer. But on the flip side, they're also strong communicators and good presenters. So they have both some hard and soft skills. Advancement in this type of position can be very similar to inside sales position where you go up the ranks as a sales engineer, you can also end up taking on product roles because you do have that coding and background experience 
that makes you more apt at understanding the, the technology that your company uses. You can always move to outside sales roles if you're enjoying the firm you're working for and want to stay in more of a sales position. And then also, sales engineers can go work for industry companies like a gardener and apply, apply their industry knowledge specific to their company, apply it on a more broader scale. Another position that can you see at tech companies, but they're also at other companies as well, is the sales operator position. So when you think of the sales operator, they really come in handy when a company is trying to scale fast and when they're rapidly increasing their sales force. And the VP of sales, director of sales, they don't have time to onboard and train and recruit new hires. So this comprehensively falls to the sales operations role. So what do sales operators do? They hire, train, and increase the sales productivity at a fast clip. So they want to get people onboarded in three months. They want, to, they want to reduce that time as fast as possible and make people successful early on in the role. Also, they work with the analytics. They create metrics, KP, KPIs, compensation systems to make sure that we're measuring the sales first force accept, uh, acceptably. They're also the glue between both sales and marketing. When you're in the heat of the quarter and the, the, the sales force is out trying to secure new deals, they don't always have time to come back and converse with marketing and talk about product and what the customer is experiencing and all the things that go into acquiring new, new, new leads. So the sales operator can be the liaison between these two. And then finally, with a lot of these companies, when they have, when a lot of these companies now have, you know, Salesforce or NetSuite, some form of CRM system, the, the sales operator is that expert in that system. And he understands, he or she understands how to read what's in the pipeline, to apply industry trends and, and metric and pull metrics from that data just to have a better understanding. Personality fit for this type of role is it's they're people who are precise and gathering information from others. They're strong forecasters, so they do bring an analytical side, organized and analytical, strong communicator and negotiators, because they're constantly talking with both the, the sales force and with marketing and made with products as well. So overall, I like to equate the, the sales operator to a stage director, someone who's behind the scenes. So they're making sure they're a the stage manager. They're making sure everything is directed properly. Lights are in the right place. Sound is right. The set is right. They set the rehearsal schedule. They bring everything together. They make the process. They make the play work. Similarly, the sales organization makes sure that the sales function works as a whole cohesive unit. One benefit to being in a sales operations role other than maybe account management or inside or outside sales position is you don't have the day-to-day -day pressure of bringing in new accounts and, and the, all the pressure that comes with being a sales professional. So specifically in tech companies, professional service roles have increased in nature and importance at these companies. So when you think of someone who's in professional services, think of originally in a business to business model, they have evolved from just selling a product and making and, and having the customer figure it out how to implement, how to use it. They've evolved into more of selling solutions or solving the problem of the customer. The product is no longer the end result. The product is just part of the toolkit. What's being sold now is the solution. And this is where the professional service team who's part of the sales organization comes in and helps consult what that solution is. So think of a professional service professional, similar to if you had a personal stylist or a personal shopper in your, in your, in your, in your back pocket. So with a professional shopper or stylist, they solve the problem of they pick out clothes for you they make sure it fits in your style and it fits with your current wardrobe versus you having to go to the store, 
picking out clothes and then thinking what you need, you know, what you need, what matches and figuring out your style. The professional shopper does that for you. Similarly, the, the sales, the professional services team provides customized solutions for their product, for their customers' needs. The last thing I like to say about this role is as it's evolved in certain companies and most companies that you can think of the professional services team as internal mini consultants centered around the product and how to make it fit into the organization. The last role that I like to talk about is installation and training. And this, this is a quick one, but essentially once you have your product, once you secure the deal and you sell it to your customer, it's being implemented, implemented. The installation and training team comes and trains your customer's team, their, their, their finance function or whoever's using the product that they just bought from you. They integrate it and train others on how to use that product. So they still are working with, com uh, with customers. They're usually part of the professional service team, their frontline and these roles, you can see advancement into product management roles and sales engineering and software development roles. So high level, I just went over eight function sales. I, I touched on them very briefly. And over the coming weeks, you'll see more videos from actual interviews with professionals in different positions. But I just wanted to give a quick review and overcap overview of what we discussed. So high level, why is sales a great entry point to a career? So the reasons is, is you get to work directly with customers. It's service orientated and you're client centric. Compensation for a lot of these roles can be favorable where since you're tied to revenue so closely, you can have both a base salary and a bonus earning potential. Success is very clear cut. Are you hitting your numbers? Are you hitting your target? Are you hitting quota? You, you can see the scoreboard on a daily basis. And then the last thing, it can be a very sharp learning curve when you get into some of these new businesses, you have to learn the market, you have to learn your customer, you have to learn your product. So it can be very stimulating in that regard too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I mentioned, be on the lookout for more videos in the sales pipeline that we'll have with professional BC alumni. And we look forward to working with you. If you have any questions, if you wanna talk more about this position or anything else, you can always contact me or anybody else in the Fulton 315 career team. We're a resource that's here for you, and we're always happy to help. Have a good one.